Hi, welcome to today's video. I thought today we'd come out and do a bit of landscape painting. I wanted to bring basil with me, so I found somewhere nice and quiet. Uh, it's in the daffodil field. The daffodils are still growing at the moment. Uh, we were sketching in here, uh, I think it was just before Christmas. It was started raining. Uh, but I was in the far corner and I thought, oh, I quite like the possibilities here. So it's not a very uh, exciting scene, but I quite like it because of the, the shapes of the fields and the telegraph poles. So, so I'm wrapped up quite well, scarf, hat and gloves, it's still quite chilly. We're in the beginning of February, so yeah, let's see how we get on. Okay, here's my palette, terps in there. Sand oil terps 50-50 roughly mixture in there which I've made up and this is the colours so roughly the same for anybody who's new to the channel I'll go through them again but they always lay them out yeah usually roughly in the same order they're laid out I've got a warm white Michael Harding warm white I've got there cadmium yellow here we've got a Naples yellow which is unusual for me but I found a tube at home so I thought I'd use it I've got a lemon yellow a cadmium red, a magenta, Indian red, raw sienna, raw umber, a violet, ultramarine blue. Today I'm using a cheap cerulean blue, which I found another little tube at home. I'm going to use that up instead of manganese. Norm manganese blue normally goes there, but I've got cerulean blue. No cobalt today. Ivory black here and I'll put some sap green out because the scene we're looking at is uh, fairly green. The telegraph poles are what I really quite like actually as they go off into the distance there. There's two there and these two here and I just like these shape of these fields. And we're going to be painting onto this uh, piece of Fabriano paper which I've uh, tacked, I've gessoed and I've tacked onto this drawing board with these uh, canvas tacks you see. This is how I used to do my views through the studio window project when I was look, looking through my window in the studio and painting that view. So I've had a spare sheet of this uh, paper and I thought I'd just uh, tack it to this drawing board and use the same method. That's why I'm using the stand oil today because I quite like it how it goes onto the paper. There's my brushes down there, variety of uh, shapes and sizes. I've got a couple of palette knives I always keep inside there and a graphite stick in case I want to do any drawing and a uh, little pot of uh, mucky terps down there which is what I'll be using to clean the brushes out with if I need to and an, an old rag so I think we're ready to go and I've got uh, young Basil with me today and he's just chilling out over there while we're just uh, getting set up how are we going to do this I, I think I do need to show a bit of sky if I want to get that in that's going to have to break through a bit now, isn't it? Let's get the sky in first. That's quite nice. It's quite absorbent, this paper. A bit more so than what I would normally use. The mixture. When I made the gesso up, I think it was uh, just a bit too, too chalky, I think. I'll use an ultramarine. A bit too two blue ultramarine Indian red I think for that with some a bit of raw umber in there so I'll look I'll add, add that into there and there's the uh, sky just roughly brushed in I quite like that actually it's quite nice a mixture of nice greys and you see the stand oils mixed with the paint and left it nice and thick quite like that that's what it looks like on the palette so i pull in from these uh areas got my ultramarine and the raw umber naples and the uh, white we bring them all in and just mix variations like that you can see i've got several variations here going on and that's what i put into the sky Right, let's get into these fields. Let's start over there, I think. Let's just get these in place. It's quite nice, that sap green. 
with the bit of violet mixed in. Quite, that's working quite nicely for the moment. This actually runs something like that. The foreground hedge, mm, it's a bit higher, something there. Quite a large, left quite a large area of quite boring stuff in the foreground. I'm going to put that in now, put something in there. I'll just fill that in. A bit more lemon there. This is, these are daffodils, of course, they're not, they haven't, they haven't flowered yet. They're nearly ready for picking, I bet they'll be picking them tomorrow or certainly early part of next week. So that's that something in for that field there. So let's get something in place for this one. We can adjust these as we go. I just need to get something something down. There's some reds and Sort of reds and things in there, it's quite nice actually. So that comes through there and actually goes up and across there. Down and then up again there. needs to just something like that along the edge bottom of that area that's going to go like that so let's try and put some of that Indian red now into the sap green that's nice and dark isn't it? I like that so that's that edge there question is just building up a little bit at a time so this is like a Naples yellow now with some violet on a dirty brush this is the this is that field Let's just put something in here so I'm getting a bit lost. And let's just get something in so I know where this is running and how, how dark it is roughly. That's that. So it runs down like that. Got this diagonal running right across here and I might break that up later but I need to just get something in there. And got a nice yellowy goldish type tree in there. It's quite nice. I can't work out these these colours in here, so I'm gonna try a magenta and a raw umber and a little bit of Naples yellow left on the brush in these areas. And some of these colours run up into that field you see. as quick as I can here. Make that a bit paler. Let's try that. So that's better. That's quite nice actually. And some of these hints of this through there. I did the same over there, it's quite nice actually. I quite like that. the cerulean blue added in there. Just giving it a different colour. Strengthened up a bit. Uh, that's, that's the field that runs across. Something like that. Let's get some of that in there. Just run that through quickly. Right, let's get some more darks back into that foreground a minute. 
we'll use the uh, uh, sap green with the Indian red. So here is a nice dark area. Something like that there. And then in here, a couple of areas are quite light. And this bit runs down like that. Let's get the rigger on this just to get this other hedgerow cover in place. So that runs then. There's a little bit of this like um, colour up here. And this then drops and then drops off over here somewhere. Something like that. Some of these colours in here just to bring this forward a bit because it's sort of sat too far. I need to really just def yeah make sure we can see that this this, this is uh, in the foreground. Let's have a look at putting these uh, telegraph poles in there. It's got a couple at the back, so they sort of um, sit in here. There's two small ones. there somewhere there's another one here let's put these two dark ones here they're quite big let's just put this back in see if we can put this in again so that was before I started messing about with it around there few finishing touches I think now because uh, it's starting to get a bit chilly now just increase that sort of orange feel to that bit there I quite like it to be a bit more just a little bit in there it's quite nice should be a bit dark I think across there just there that goes up let's get some on that field rough it up a bit we should need a different green running through there don't we so it's more of a defined green running through there let's have a look yes yeah, sort of here the field sort of goes more like that let's get some push some of this in neat Neat paint into here. Let's see if I can just alter it a little bit. It's streaky still, isn't it? So that's what we've got there. Little uh, oil sketch looking over there. Look at that dog chilling out there. Anybody think it was summer? Uh, yes, that's what we're looking at, and that's what I've got. I think I've had enough now. I think that's as far as I can take this one. It was not the most interesting scene, not as interesting as I first thought. But uh, nevertheless, it's all good fun, all good practice. So that's uh, oil on paper, just ordinary drawing paper that I've gessoed. So yeah, with the fourth... I'll just uh, write that in quickly. 4th of Feb 2023. And this is... Uh, 
Where are we? It's a good question actually. We're sort of in the middle of no we're in the middle of several villages here, but we call it Drim. Drim Fields. And it's what it's about eleven o'clock in the morning now. So this is like my uh, sketch for the day, but in oils and with the easel and everything. And there's my mucky palette at the end of it all. Just scrape that off because I've got a workshop on Monday, so I need to have a nice clean palette for that. Uh, well, that's the end of that one. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, oil sketch on paper. And uh, I think it's time to head home now, going for a coffee. Uh, Basil's keen to move on. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. It was good fun. Not as uh, quite as interesting a scene as I first thought it might be with these telegraph poles running across. And I ran into trouble with the foreground. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it because I, I probably left a bit too much space. I should have done a smaller sketch, really, I think. Anyway, you live and learn, don't you? So, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. And bye for now.